Hey, what's up? Is the FOMO bug biting you? Well, it's Christopher, aka the Bronze Age Nerd, and I'm back with another top five not to buy. This is my list of the top five worst buys from the combined Key Collector Trending 20, CBSI Hot 10, and Cover Price Top 10. I think these are the five worst investments in comic books that appear on those lists. Let's jump in at number five, which I'm calling the worst buy this week, and I'm going to do a little bit more research like I did in the last video. This one, we're going to take a look at What If Planet Hulk number one. This book is commonly called The First Appearance of Scar. Now, we all know that Scar appeared in She-Hulk, so it's had the world kind of buzzing a little bit, uh, mostly about his haircut, uh, <laughs> about about how, you know, how much this character is going to mean for the MCU, right? My guess is not a whole lot, but let's talk about the book itself. We're talking about what if Planet Hulk number one here. So he appears in these two panels, and then his back is turned in this panel looking up to a statue of his father. Keep in mind, this is a what if book. So not only do I think that's perfect fodder for a cameo, he appears in shadows, he appears with his back turned, but I also think that this may not even be his first appearance because we often see the precedent where the first appearance in a what if story, in an alternate reality, does not count as much as the first real appearance of the character. Look no further than what if number 10, the first appearance of Thordis, which is when Jane Foster becomes Thor. Now that was an older book. It was an established key before Jane Foster Thor was even a thing, right? Like it was a book that people were still interested in. And it, it kind of started to shoot up a little bit more once she became Thor, but it wasn't the book that people really gravitated to for Love and Thunder when we found out that, that Jane Foster was coming in as Thor. Those books were the modern books. And you could argue kind of the same thing happened with uh, with uh, uh, Captain Carter, right? There was a big debate. Is Exiles 3 really the first appearance? Because it's not really the core 616 version of the character. So then you had people saying, well, Captain Carter number one is the first appearance of that character. And then you had people, you know, kind of going back and forth on that. And we're going to talk about that book at a different time. But for, for this book, it really has to make you wonder, is this considered the first appearance? Now, for a point of comparison, let's check out the other books that you should know about. And one of them is World War Hulk number five, which is considered the first full appearance by some people. And here we have what people look for in this appearance, which is a one panel of this character rising up. So one argument you can make, and I tend to agree with this one, is that uh, Scar, son of Hulk, number one, might be the first appearance because you do have him on the cover here. You have him appearing as a child throughout the book, and then you have him appearing on you know this full two-page spread at the end as an adult. Now, look, I, I don't know if you could say like, hey, this makes it a full appearance. In my opinion, it is because he kind of comes out of the book running as, as Hulk. So it is messy, and... My point here is that I think people are putting a lot of eggs in the what if Planet Hulk basket and, and my advice is to watch out. I think what you see here with the two page spread and him appearing as a kid throughout the book, Scar Son of Hulk to me seems more like a real first full appearance than World War Hulk 5 or what if Planet Hulk, even with everything else going on in those books, even, even with it being an alternate in what if, however you view it, to me, this is the first full appearance. It's a very messy one for this character. You might need to know, own all the books if you want to have all your bases covered. I just wonder if, you know, people understanding what's inside the guts of these books might make a difference in whether or not this book's actually valuable. All of that aside, everyone's making fun of Scar straight out of the gates. So why are we going to put so much money and investment into Scar with soft MCU spec these days? I think I'm going to avoid this book, and that's my that's my suggestion this week for one of the top books to avoid. In the number four spot, let's talk about Daredevil 28, which is the first, uh, not really the first appearance appearance of Mayor Fisk, in my opinion, it's it's when he gets elected. I don't know. But however you look at it, it whether or not, you, let's just say you want to call this the first appearance of Mayor Fisk. Great. If he becomes a mayor in the show, though, where do you see this book going? Like, what is the ceiling for this book? That's the question I asked somebody uh, that we were talking about this spec earlier today. Uh, shout out to Zombie Prophet over on the uh, Department of Comics Discord. Where, what's the ceiling here? Like, where do you go with this book? Where do you see it capping out? If you're pulling this book for two bucks, great. If you're kind of spending on it now that it's on the hot list, ordering it off eBay, I, I don't know where this book really has the potential to end up to make you a lot of return on that investment because it's not a huge key. Like granted, you know, with, with Wilson Fisk at first appearance, we're getting priced out of that for most collectors, but 
I just don't see it for this book. I mean, it's an interesting storyline, but it's like when when you have um, Norman Osborn take over the Dark Avengers. Is that a key that people really care about? I don't know if it is. So I'm going to go ahead and avoid this one this week as well. Let's move on to number three. All right, this one is sad. The Return of Mark Hamill, which was a free comic book, promotional comic book from Jack in the Box. I really wanted it. I ordered a few because mostly I thought it'd be fun to give them out. I had no idea that it was going to be something where it was going to be kind of harder to get. But even if it was harder to get, I have the impression that there probably are a lot of these out there, and I bet they weren't shipped in amazing condition. I haven't yet confirmed that, but my guess is that these probably aren't going to be a huge collector's item, and I would really wait for the buzz to wear off on this book before pursuing it. That's just my advice. And I, I actually really want this book. So I am going to take my own advice. I'm going to wait, you know, like a year or something and see if I can get this book for a lot cheaper. I bet I can. We'll make sure to follow up as I do my follow-up price check videos and we'll see if that turned out to be true. Side note, a 9-8 of this, if, if, you know, I'm just thinking about how some of these promotional comics get shipped. That might be worth it. I, I don't know. I'd have to kind of see like what most of these turned out like. If you got one of these, let me know in the comments below how it was shipped and what kind of condition you received it in. Okay, number two on the list is Batman number six from 2012. This is kind of debatably the first appearance of the Court of Owls. And I this hit the CBSI Hot 10 list. I think the reason given by Ben on that list was that it was probably because of, of uh, uh, Spawn, Batman, uh, they're going to appear in there, so it kind of has some renewed interest in these characters. I don't see that being a reason that this book's going to hold value on it. However, to me, what this says, because it is kind of uh, heating up right now, this says if there was ever to be like a Court of Owls movie, that this book probably would be a good investment. So again, this would be one of those things where I'd wait until all the heats died off from Spawn Batman, which shouldn't take very long. Then I would look at, you know, okay, what do we do with this book? You know, when, when would you want to pick it up in anticipation of the Court of Owls ever being used as a villain in a Batman movie? which I think has fairly high likelihood. Perfect time to wait and see, in my opinion. Okay, number one on the list. This one is tough. It's always tough putting older books on the list because I think, in general, they're better investments than the modern stuff. This is DC Comics Presents 49. Uh, look, I, I haven't seen Black Adam. Um, we could say there's spoilers for Black Adam here, but I haven't seen it yet. Rumors are that Superman appears in this film, though. That's that's the rumor. If that's true, that's kind of why this, you know, is, is essentially is being presented as a book that you might want to pick up, because in it, Shazam and Superman team up to fight Black Adam. And that could totally happen in the movies. Again, I haven't seen it. I really don't know. Um, I, I, I don't think it actually happens in this movie. That's my understanding. So if it does kind of come to pass, it's going to be in a future movie. So first of all, you'll have that chance to buy this book when it cools down. Second of all, that's something that is going to be a very specific, like you'll need to sell that definitely before whatever movie that happens in comes out. DC is so all over the place right now. Who even knows if that's actually going to happen? Like projects could be canceled. We don't, you know, they could decide to reboot everything. We have some news that a couple of people are, are taking over uh, the DCU helm. If you don't know about that, I'll be talking about it in a future live show. Uh, so basically, you know, I, I don't know. You have James Gunn taking over. That's what I'm talking about in case you're wondering. Who knows what direction they're going to take this? Are they going to see it through? Uh, is it really going to happen? Is it going to happen the way it happened in the comic books? Almost certainly not. Even at the end of the day, if all that comes to pass, what what is this book really going to be worth in people's minds after that movie comes out? Probably almost nothing compared to before when it came out. Um, that's just how these thing, things tend to work when it comes to an event happening in a movie. It's different with a character. It's you know I keep going back to this. It's not like Robert Downey Jr. taking on the role of Iron Man. That propelled Iron Man into the stratosphere. The Avengers became, you know, an, an A-tier team that people really cared about in the world of comic book collecting after the Avengers appeared in the movies. A fight as one singular moment, it's probably not going to carry that same kind of legacy in collectors' eyes. Maybe it will. But my bet is that it won't. So this has been my top five not to buy for this week. Let me know what you think about the list in the comments down below. If there's any books you disagree with, I'd love to hear about it. If you have any that you would add to the list, I'd love to hear about those too. I want to thank all my channel members for their support. That really helps me out. It helps me uh, afford things like access to cover price and, and a lot of different subscriptions I use on the channel and to pay for my internet access. I appreciate all of that. Thank you so much. And I hope everyone has a wonderful day. I'll catch you in the next video. And until then, I want to remind you, as always... Hey, 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 hey. Read comics every day.